Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb bringing you information on Biotoxin Illness Part 3, The Role of Glutathione. Now this is really interesting. So you've heard that our immune system has two layers to it. One layer is our very primitive immune system that's the reactive, it's called the innate system. It's built into all of us. Everything from lizards and alligators to us humans. It's very nonspecific, it's reactive, it just lashes out. And the other is our adaptive system that's much more specific. It's got antibodies and T cells that fight precisely. It's sort of like, if I make an analogy, a bomb going off in a city and 911 is called and everybody scatters and runs for out of fear and the police call a curfew and everything shuts down that and then that's your innate system but we don't know who we're fighting we're just doing reactive things of hiding and defending and protecting ourselves and closing things down well that's actually where glutathione fits in and glutathione probably crosses both sides now your adaptive system in that analogy would be uh surveillance cameras finding somebody's license plate and then tracing down what their picture looks like and putting it out on the media for everybody to follow who the perpetrator might be. But back to glutathione. Glutathione is your body's natural antioxidant. It is actually a very simple chemical. It's only got three amino acids in it. It's a tiny little protein, but one of them has sulfur, and sulfur sucks up free uh, electrons. That makes it a very powerful antioxidant. And it allows you to tag and label and identify toxins and make them innocuous. So there has been papers published on this, uh, and that's what's reviewed in, our, reviewed in our written document, that show that as we age, our glutathione levels drop remarkably. And there's actually many kinds of glutathione. There's many different, we inherit multiple different varieties. And about half of us have one glutathione making or manufacturing protein that's quite slow. We don't know why it's so slow, but it's much less active than others. And this seems to be correlated with risk for Alzheimer's disease and other such neurological problems. Well, let me give you two examples that I have personally seen. Uh, one woman in her mid-60s had had respiratory problems for a couple of years and had been to a pulmonologist and told it wasn't asthma, despite her wheezing and her documented low oxygen, and taken a couple months to recover on several occasions, had a relapse. And when she came to me, we gave her IV glutathione, morning and evening for three days in a row, and she was cured. Not f four months, three days. Okay, fast forward a 75-year-old woman with 15 yellow jacket stings to her face. She wasn't wheezing, but she had her whole face was all puffed up. Now, insect stings are another way of entry into biotoxin illness. We gave this woman just two doses of glutathione, and in addition to her Benadryl, she was healed virtually in 24 hours. Really interesting. Now, how can you get glutathione? Well, getting IV glutathione is a bit tricky, but you can get it orally. You can buy liposomal glutathione. Very hard to make glutathione to your stomach because your stomach ends up just digested. But you can get liposomal glutathione uh, widely in lots of different venues. Or you can take N-acetylcysteine, NAC, which used to be a prescription drug, but now is widely available as a supplement. And it should be noted that's on Dale Bredesen's list of necessary supplements for all of us to take. So consider taking NAC yourself. What will work for me? I personally take NAC every day. I think you should too. We, in fact, do you know your glutathione level? I suspect none of you have had it measured. Consider talking to your doctor about getting to know that. And for those of us who have quite low levels, you might find that you are susceptible to a lot of illnesses you hadn't been before. NAC may help that. This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about biotoxin illness part three, the role of glutathione.